Hi, welcome to Strike. In this video, we'll be explaining to you the use of derivatives data based sentiment indicators. The first and foremost, simplest, most common indicator is called the put call ratio. What is the put call ratio? We divide the number of puts by the number of calls in different formats to understand whether traders are betting more on the bullish side or the bearish side. There are two types of put call ratios. And the first one is calculated on the basis of open interest. In this scenario, we take the total open interest in puts, then divided by the total open interest in calls. I then take a nine day moving average of this data point just to smoothen it out and then plot it as an indicator, which is what you're seeing on the screen here in green. So this green indicator, which is an open interest based put by call ratio tends to move with the market price, which means when the markets go up, the OIPCR goes up. When the market goes down, the OIPCR goes down. The way we read this indicator is we can set a particular range within which it is moving during a particular time. We'll try to set these red horizontal bars to a particular time period where uh, it's working. And so we can actually adjust these red lines over time. And that's what we will do from our end. And they would then indicate where it's getting overbought or oversold during that time period. Now, not just overbought and oversold readings are the ones that we look at uh, that work. We also look for divergences. Divergences mean that if prices continue to make a higher high and if the indicator doesn't make a higher high, we get a negative divergence. And similarly, if prices continue to make a lower low and the indicator does not make a lower low, we get a positive divergence. So these two types of divergences are extremely useful in identifying where we are in the overall price action. So now you can see this is a top that occurred in April of 2022. The put call ratio peaked close to that point and then rolled over. And as it started to decline, it also declined with prices. So the highest point was reached when prices peaked. We also see that here in December of 2022, the highest price coincided with the highest price in the indicator. Similarly, we can get many bottoms that coincide. For example, these lows here, each of them followed by a small little bounce when it was oversold at the bottom end of the range. I can zoom out a bit and that would show us multiple historical occasions of the same behavior. Now that's not the only thing we look at, like I said, and by a divergence, what I mean is when prices do something and the indicator does something else, right? So we're actually looking at price movement, which means they're making higher highs in this scenario. And simultaneously, if you see the indicator, not making a higher high, in fact, making a lower high, this amounted to a negative divergence in price action. And when you get a reversal after a negative price, uh, you know, divergence, then that's sort of a better confirmation of a trend reversal. You can note this same pattern, even at this top, the initial one that we looked at, where prices made a slightly higher high, but the indicator made a much lower high. Similarly, we can also get bullish divergences where a lower low in prices and a higher low in the indicator can amount to a bullish or positive divergence. So two ways of reading any of these indicators. One is extreme readings, very high, very low readings. And second is divergences. So whenever we get one of those two things, we pay attention to what prices are really doing. And we look for the possibility of a reversal from there. So now that I've broadened the range, you can see that in the preceding period, Overbought and oversold conditions during 2017, 2018, 19 were contained to this price range. So all readings above maybe a 1.2 were overbought and all readings below a 0.96 were oversold. In 21, 22, we've seen that range shift slightly down to the downside during this range bound period and all readings above one are overbought. So this uh, reading above one or this reading above one was an overbought reading and all readings below maybe 0.65 uh, are oversold readings. So that's how we look at the open interest based put call ratio. Now, we can also have a different indicator. This is known as the volume based put call ratio. Now the difference is that in the open interest put call ratio, we saw that the ratio moves up and down with price and it acts as a much more shorter term indicator of where we are in the overall market and the sentiment. The volume based put call ratio is slightly more medium term to longer term indicator because you don't get extreme readings every now and then. They only come once in a couple of years, but you can have in between overbought oversold readings uh, to also consider. The volume based put call ratio is also calculated 
differently, which means it is based on the volume of puts traded and not the open interest at the end of the day. So the number of contracts traded in puts divided by the number of calls traded at the end of the day, uh, the number of contracts, once we divide the two, that is the put contracts by the call contracts traded during the day, we get the volume put call ratio. Here again, to smoothen the data, I've taken a 14 day moving average. Another feature of this indicator is that unlike the OI based PCR, which is directly correlated to price, the volume based PCR is inversely correlated to price, which means that when the market goes up, the OI based PCR actually tends to go down. It may diverge from price only when there is a pending trend reversal. So when we see an extreme reading here, we have taken a time period from 2012 to onwards, uh, uh, which we've put the data, we will be giving you an entire time period from when the data actually became available. Uh, this data is of course available since the inception of FNO, which is 2001. Uh, but here looking at this time frame, if we put two red lines, this is broadly looking at extreme reading. So extreme readings means when, when it's really low, okay, and uh, extreme readings on the top when it's really high can mark certain tops and bottoms in the market. So if I have this extreme reading, okay, which means a lot of puts are being traded, where are we in terms of price action? We're probably close to a market. Provide these markings like here. Okay, and you'll actually get a point where you're at the bottom. The same with this extreme reading just around the pandemic, very close to the pandemic bottom or just around that. At the tops, also we can get similar points where uh, this low reading here is associated with the top near the October 21 high. But like I said, uh, as in both indicators, some data points are associated with the highs uh, extreme readings. So again, we look at divergences here. We had an extremely low reading in the volume put call ratio, which means the market should have topped, but it didn't. So it continued to move higher. And as it moved higher, we ended up seeing the market make a higher high, whereas the volume based put call ratio made a higher low. So this is a bearish divergence where a new high in the market did not result in a new low in the indicator. Remember, they are inversely correlated. So you expect higher prices to result in a lower indicator but if it results in a higher indicator that's a positive diverge and that's what we ended up getting here at this top so now here this extreme reading right so here we didn't really need a positive divergence at this top itself but this top only resulted in a short term two month correction ended up getting a higher high in the market which was then associated with a higher low in the indicator which is then a bearish divergence okay and that again resulted in another sell-off which was slightly bigger in size again in time it was in the final top and we actually ended up with multiple divergences in this case, each one resulting in, uh, we made a major top, which is in Jan of 2020. So we can get, like I said, extreme readings and positive negative uh, divergences, both of which give us an indication of what the price action or market may be likely to do. So here's one final divergence I will leave you with. This is price is making a lower low. What should that have meant? That should have meant that the volume put call ratio makes an even higher high, getting more oversold. But instead of making a higher high, it made a lower high and thus resulted in a bullish positive divergence. The next indicator to study is going to be looking at the total futures open interest. Now total futures open interest is essentially the open interest as of, you know, in the futures market. And we, we study this just to understand history See on the screen uh, later on then you might find that it even trends inside a channel. You'll also find that it, it will remain flat or break out or break down at certain points of time and divergences. So this indicator is useful only in studying long term trends because essentially if markets keep going up, the total open interest in the futures market also keeps going up. It's only at turning points like here that you might find that new highs in the market are not associated with new highs in the open interest, which shows people are not willing to buy the higher highs in the market they're buying less and less or they're probably mildly uh, you know giving up on their positions differently in a different time period which is here in 2020 we notice that futures open interest is not coming down at all despite all this volatility even when it declined uh, it did not really see much of a dip in the total open interest sort of very very flat so that shows people are unwilling to unwind their position so completely different scenarios and uh, each one telling you uh, something different about the market. So here, when you have a decline, say, for example, this was a downward trend in the market, you ended up with a positive divergence, which is a slightly higher high, which means more buying into the lows. 
indicating that there is greater interest in the market at that point of time. One additional way to study uh, the futures open interest data is compare it to an index. And that is sort of what we have done here is we've actually divided the data by the index itself. The reason is that if the market keeps going up, of course, the data keeps rising because that's just the nature. If price moves up, the total open interest, which is in crores of rupees, will also be higher because higher price into number of contracts leads to a higher value. So the way to normalize this data and put it inside a range is to divide the futures open interest by the underlying index. Now I've used, of course, the a broader based index over here, although the uh, index to compare with is the Nifty because it's, it's the futures open interest of the NSE. But we've divided the data itself by a broader index. I've used the uh, BSE 100 as a benchmark as a broad index and uh, that then normalizes the data and what it actually shows you is have we really reached on a relative basis the same high in terms of position as before so here the nifty has gone from a 12,000 level to an 18,000 level that's a big advance have futures positions also increased by that extent the answer is no this is what the normalized data shows but again in this data we might be able to spot simple divergences okay like for example now uh, here it becomes even more apparent that positions are unwinding at a higher and higher level in the index right because now we are looking at relative data and similarly we might even see positive divergences at points of time when the market falls and you actually find that there is more buying because nobody is unwinding their positions and both can give you an indication of a bullish or bearish setup like for example here even as the market declined uh, through 2015-16 uh, positions uh, did not make a lower low. And that sort of shows a sign that people are not unwinding beyond this point. Now, when we studied put call ratios, you're we actually looking at uh, the ratio, which is dividing calls by puts. But another way to measure it is by looking at histogram. So I just changed this from a line chart to histogram chart, uh, you know, bars on top and below. What this really tells me is whether more calls are being bought and sold than puts. Now, of course, the put call ratio says the same thing. But instead of a ratio, we are actually looking at a value. Uh, the importance of this is now if I go back to 2018 when I first started to look at this data, what I found is that uh, there are certain points of time like here when the rally was very strong going into the highs of 2017-18, you had huge put writing uh, to a completely record amount at that point of time. So these records were hit uh, which were almost like 50,000 contracts was a record, I mean 50,000 crores was a record at that point of time uh, and it showed that you know excessive bullishness because remember while put open interest being more than calls might appear bearish to you but because it is open interest which is a result of both buyers and writers the way i look at it is when the market goes up you always find more put open interest than call open interest because writers are willing to sell puts relative to calls so in a rising market writers will sell more puts indicating their bullish position and if it is at a record amount it shows record bullish sentiment on the part of writers and that's a very different way of looking at it of course you can counter argue that there are buyers and it's a short squeeze but the fact that the highest amount of puts at that point of time results in a market peak means somewhere uh, it was an extreme in sentiment whether it was you know extreme shorting that brought it down or whether it was just that you wrote too much uh, reflecting your bullish sentiment because the same thing is also seen in a falling market right when the markets fall then you see record amount of call writing which is selling of calls. Now we've seen a lot of that in 2021-22 after the market peaked in October, you find the call open interest hitting records throughout this time period. And every time it hits a record, sort of reverses. Now two things happen. Uh, one is that if you have a lot of open interest on one side of the market, say for example, there's a lot of calls outstanding, then definitely for that month, it may look like the market cannot go up much because well, everybody owns calls and they're not going to get paid. The writers get paid. And uh, but at the end of that, if it's a record, it also means that uh, sentiment was extremely bearish. And once, uh, uh, you know, that phase ends, you get a rebound in the market. So we watch this, we watch the data, and then we, we actually look for it to expire. And post expiry of, you know, record sentiment, you can sometimes get a trend reversal. Now, of course, you need to match that with your wave structure and make sure that if the timing is right, you can get you know, subsequent lows as well, like here you can see a lot of writing, then again here and then the eventually uh, getting a bottoming out. So we've seen a lot of call writing and peaks and even records being reached each time the markets hit a bottom 
you add a new record in call writing. The last indicator we've added here is the total open interest of the market as a whole, including not just the futures side, but the option side as well, which means calls, puts and futures all put together. What is the total open interest in the market? Note that when I'm looking at total open interest futures or total open interest futures plus call plus put, okay, because uh, that then sort of normalizes the log scale. It will appear like the data is pretty flat. And because it's long term data and it keeps rising, rising, rising. on a log scale, it shows more relativity as to how much it has actually written in uh, risen in percentage terms and therefore allows us to make some kind of comparison. Now here again, this is a long term data point. What we would look for here is whether you're crossing previous highs and whether you're making positive or negative divergences at important turning points.